time it is thursday october 20th and this is your daily financial news we will dig into the existing home data more in a subsequent video uh, the data came out at 7 a.m so i've been only had a minute or two to look at it but i've got the important numbers and let's see how we did First and foremost, this is a report from National Association of Realtors, often called NAR. This is uh, the monthly report that in July, I believe, pivoted the market. Uh, I'm going to give you what my expectations were and then what happened. And then I have to go back through yesterday's video and see who got it right. Because as you will see, I did not get it right. I did not get the number right today. Uh, in fact, of all four metrics, I got one right, in my opinion. But let's go through it. So, price. Everybody wants to talk price. Last month was three eighty nine five hundred. I guessed we would see three ninety one or up fifteen hundred dollars. In reality, it came down to three eighty four eight hundred. So we are definitely off the peak from June. I think June was four four fourteen four sixteen something like that. Uh, we are at 384,800. What are you doing, Sonny? 384,800. Now, uh, sales. This is the one that surprised me the most. This must be a hangover from the July reduction in interest rates. Uh, there, my expectation was that we would do 4.55 million transactions. Last month, just so you remember, was 4.8 million. They came in at 4.71. So more than I expected, down from last month, but certainly more than expected. And just for you folks who like year on year, came down 23.8%. Next month of supply, I expected this to be a bigger jump. I am seeing supply and demand destruction, which generally means you know property stays on the market longer. This stayed relatively flat at 3.2 months. This has to go up. This just has to go up, but it certainly did not go up this month. And then the only number that I will give myself credit for, so one out of four, definitely not what, not, what I'm happy with, is uh, active inventory. Active inventory is down. I thought it would go down to 1.26. Last month was 1.33. So this is this is this is some meaty reductions. So again, inventory came down to 1.25. So folks, we should go through the daily financial news yesterday and see who guessed. I actually think somebody was really close. I think somebody guessed 384 500. That is that is a win. We need to go see who the first one was. We need to get them a t-shirt or a book whatever they desire. So let's figure out who that was cuz uh you nailed it. Congratulations. Next up, Tesla. Tesla earnings yesterday, uh, they came in light on revenue, which I think they kind of told us when they gave us their delivery numbers earlier in the month. Their earnings per share beat. The FX or currency charge was $250 million. It wasn't half a million or more, which some analysts had feared. Also, their shipping cost uh, was not as much because, again, what you're seeing with Tesla is a lot of their demand in China has fallen off. Hence, they have to put Teslas on boats and get them to Europe or the United States. So lots of shipping costs there. So again, it wasn't material. But their 50% growth rate that they have been trumpeting and at one point talked about 60% growth rate, it is uh, going to prove challenging given the recession. Uh, going forward. But again, I have not looked at their stock. I've been worried about the existing home sales. So uh, I don't know what their stock's doing today. My guess is as a growth company, when you missed your growth targets, it comes in. I have no skin in the game. I have no desire to own a cult stock. Not for me, but you know, we shall see. IBM. IBM's an interesting tech company, definitely a dinosaur, uh, but it does give me a feel for rest of world. Right, they have this IBM Global Services and mainframes and just all of this stuff that they sell. Uh, they beat top line, beat bottom line in raised guidance, kind of a triple beat, if you will. 
AT&T came out this morning and actually posted decent numbers and had their highest wireless revenue growth in over a decade at 5.6%. On top of that, also American Airlines kind of kept the beat like Delta and United, beat top line, beat bottom line, travel demand going up. Uh, uh, Alcoa, Alcoa, one of those commodity uh, makers, aluminum, uh, they missed top line, missed bottom line and actually lowered shipment projections. So very, very interesting. We did get answers on the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. Remember yesterday, I think we talked about it being down 34%. President Biden will replenish the uh, Strategic Petroleum Reserve when oil hits $70, 7-0. So good news, there is a plan there uh, to refill it up at $70. I don't know when we hit 70 but I'm happy to say there is a plan. The UK, I don't know if you saw it this morning, but the UK Prime Minister, ooh, I'm going to sneeze, Liz Truss, I believe her name is, has resigned. Uh, she held that position for about 43 days. She obviously came out with a trickle-down uh, economic policy, and then they were going to um, spend more money as well, right? Lower taxes, spend more money, which blew up the bond market caused a lot of consternation. She is now out. People are asking me, one sec. People are asking me if this is a good thing or a bad thing. I have no idea. Uh, I don't pretend to know UK politics at all. Uh, I will say that this seems to be another disruption. I think it, I think it was coming, right? It was, it was baked in the cake that she would resign. Now we have to worry about who fills that seat, right? So again, um, you know, we need to wait and see. I understand they're going to, I don't know, I guess be holding nominations or elections over the next week. We just need to see who fills that seat. So more on that coming. Housing starts. We did talk about housing starts yesterday, but I had a chance to dig into the numbers, which I don't often do sometimes in the morning because some of these reports come out at 7 a.m. and you and I are talking at 7 sometimes. Multifamily starts. Right when they when you get a housing starts number, it's multifamily and single family. They're combined. Right, single family makes up the majority, but still they are combined. Multifamily starts are down thirteen percent to five hundred and thirty k. That's a pretty big drop from last month six hundred and twenty one. So again, the housing depression is is absolutely in effect. Not only are we seeing transactions down twenty three point eight percent. We're seeing building down. This is this is how housing goes from a recession to how housing goes to a depression. Just not a lot going on when you have 30-year interest rates at a 20-year high. Yesterday, 7.22 Mortgage Business Daily. Uh, that is a 20-year high. Redfin, because of the interest rates, has come out and adjusted their expectations. Uh, Redfin expects sales to be down 25% year on year. Pretty easy call, Redfin. Try to try to be ahead of the game next time. But they also call listings. Listings to be down 22%. This is housing market destruction. This is the Fed broke housing. So lots and lots of stuff going on. And then back to housing starts. I'm sorry I talked about multifamily but failed to hit single family. My mistake. Single family is down for the 10th month in a row. It is now under 900,000. Single family builders are slowing way down. They are canceling lots. Anything that's finished, they're discounting. Now they are readjusting business models, build for rent, smaller communities, you know, just letting options expire on land. It is going to slow way down. Fed Bullard, Fed, Fed James Bullard, I believe, James Bullard. He is saying that the Fed must follow through, and then we can hold. What I believe James Bullard is saying is we're going to get banged with 75 in November, banged with 75 in December. Then maybe, just maybe, they hold. Uh, I do believe we get at least one rate increase in 2023. But what I think James Bullard is trying to tell the market is we're almost done. We're almost done. This is not a Fed pivot, folks. I'm not saying Fed pivot. All I'm saying is Fed pause. We're almost there. We're like 11 days from November 2nd. We're six weeks or whatever it is from December 14th. 
it's almost there. It's almost there. So again, we're almost through this rate increase where they can pause, but we definitely have at least two, if not three more to go. Uh, but damn it, hurry up, guys. Get there. Let this thing reset, and we can move forward from there. He is uh, Bullard is really up for front loading, which is why I think we get 75 and 75 uh, November, December. Uh, but we shall see as, it, as it's coming. And then there's more and more talk about what type of recession will we have? What type of recession will we have? Mo more and more folks are talking about a 1990 to 1991 recession. This recession was, by all accounts, very um, light. It, it was basically a GDP down 1.4%. I'm sorry, 1.8%, 1.8% over about a six-quarter period. Unemployment went up slightly. It was just, it was absolutely a recession, but as recessions go, it was a light one or what, what the talking heads would call a shallow recession. Bank of America is out talking about banks. You and I have talked about this the last couple of days. It really feels like banks, like the big banks are really set up to make good profits because all they have to do is roll cash to the overnight lending rate and they're making over 3%. They're paying us 0 0.1, 0 0.2. So there's a lot of margin being made by banks. Bank of America says uh, Fed rate hikes could actually boost bank profits by billions. I agree. They don't even have to work very hard. When does Wall Street have layoffs if they're just trucking money uh, into the treasury market or overnight lending market? It doesn't take a lot of a lot of bodies to do that. Anything else? I think that's it. Oh, Supreme Court. Looks like the Supreme Court might get involved in the student loan uh, forgiveness. Apparently, somebody has taken it to the Supreme Court and asked them to block the student debt relief program. Apparently, uh, as soon as this Sunday, this Sunday, uh, some of the student loans could be forgiven based on the article I read. I don't know what's going on, uh, but it definitely seems like this is not quite over. So, folks, have an amazing day. It is October 20th. Once again, housing is slowing down. Prices down again, down, what is that, about five grand. They were 389, 500 last month. They're now 384, 800. So, let's call that a $5,000 drop. It's about what, one and a half percent ish. Uh, in, or uh, transactions were up. This is weird. This is the annualized number. Transactions were up. This has to be that little dip in interest rates we saw in July and August, I believe. It's hard to believe that, that transactions are up. Months of inventory, this number needs to go up in the future. This needs to get to four, four and a half, five. And then active inventory, active inventory went down, went down. So again, folks, have an amazing day. We need to go through together and see who is closest to 384, 800. Because somebody, somebody earned this shirt and it wasn't me. You nailed it. I want to mail you a shirt. If you want a book instead, we could do that. Either way, congratulations. And then lastly, Abhishek, congratulations for doing the work, getting your great deal. Uh, your card will be in the mail shortly. Congratulations, everybody. Have an amazing day. Thursday, October 20th. Bye-bye.